How much planning went into creating this final...? Well, I think it's... We're finished now, so this, we're not... You know, I can say it. We always used to plan uh -oh. things to happen on these specials you go. This, and, but you'd hope that organic things would happen. Which nearly always did. Which and nearly that's always did. But, I mean, you'd get the explosions and so on and so forth. And we just decided with Zimbabwe to not plan anything. Really. I mean, not really. And it just be a... Leave the dynamite at home is how Wilman um, referred <laughs> to it. Yeah. And, um, by and large, it's just us three bumbling along in those three really rather wonderful cars across Zimbabwe, which I think we're all in agreement is probably the most beautiful place any of us have ever been You to. could argue we saved the best till last. Yeah, it's Breath. quite spectacular. I mean, not, not like sometimes you go, oh, that's a lovely view. Zimbabwe does this somewhere. You go around every corner and the view changes completely. You're one minute you're in Sri Lanka, then you're in Austria, then you're in Ireland, then you... Well, there's a jacaranda tree and it just... It, it doesn't it? It's just ridiculously... Breath. Um, variable. I remember in the early days um, going around Britain, you sort of got the feeling that, that maybe we were becoming known because people being British would sort of go, all right. And, <laughs> and then we started sort of travelling around a bit and then there was a time, it was the Middle East special, we were driving through Syria, I Al believe. Al-Rakhar, Yes, and Hammond had Which a isn't there anymore. catastrophic dose of the <laughs> if I remember rightly. And we stopped <laughs> at, a, at, at a... Yes. <laughs> I mean, at a, effectively a truck stop. It, in, if it was in Britain, it would be a burger van, but obviously it wasn't a burger van. It was this, this hut that sold um, falafel and that sort of thing. There was a bloke there, and as far as I could tell, he lived there. And it was right in the middle of nowhere, and we stopped. And I went up and I thought, I'm going to go and have something from his snack shack. And as I approached the little window thing, he said, Welcome in my country, Captain Slow. <laughs> and I thought, how do you, how do you know? Were you nicer to each other? I'm not sure that you were. Yes, no, I think we were slightly. Do you I remember? You I was nice once to James. He was behind me and he was driving through something particularly tricky. I'll never forget it. And I saw it in the mirror and I did say over the radio, oh, mate, nice driving. And then there was a sort of silence. Mm. Shocked. Yeah. Well, we didn't know how to well, I was wondering when your relationship oh, well, would become physical and I thought it was around about then. I, I, that's, <laughs> that's kind of what triggered it, to be honest. We worked it out together that evening. But I actually helped you mend your car at one point, which you've never done before, and you thanked me for helping you um, open the sunroof on your last I did say so, thank you very much, and you yeah. helped me. No, I don't know, maybe we were nicer to each other. We've been, we've been doing press interviews all day today, and I found it was quite refreshing to be nice to each other, because yeah. normally we say that we're fueled creatively by a loathing of one another, but it's not really true. Yeah, I'm glad we didn't think of it earlier. That would have spoiled everything, wouldn't yeah. it? It would never have worked. <laughs> exactly. I'll miss the start of a special, and I'll miss the fact that I mean, we've done stuff together all over the world in every conceivable landscape, but also all the live stuff we've done together. And you reach a point where if we're three on camera and something happens, you do sort of instinctively know, oh, that's a Jeremy thing, I'm going to let him run with that, and then I'll mm. chip in with a little line. Oh, James, is, that's going to infuriate James, and I know Jeremy's going to point that out. So there's a kind of we short... We can't read each other. You don't have so to... Well. Yeah, you, you, it just... You don't have to script it because it happens automatically. Yeah. That I, I can walk up to Hammond, or, or May, actually, any time of day or night, and if I say something, I yeah. could write down exactly what they're going to say back. It's like being married, isn't it? No. <laughs> <laughs> but we needed to get separated from Hammond, so I had this idea that I was going to put something on social media, and I'll come to what happened later, but put something on social media saying that um, in this town, I can't remember where it was, somewhere in northern Italy, um, Richard Hammond would be appearing the next day in the town square at 12 o'clock. And this is, this is what happened. That was just one tweet in northern Italy, and this is what um, happened, if you've got the clip of it. Let's have a look. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> this has gone really wrong. This has gone so spectacularly wrong. Oh, my word. Hello, is there an event on? <laughs> yeah, there's... But I can explain... <laughs> I can explain what happened there. I'd written Richard Hammond will be appearing in this square at 12 o'clock the following day, but I'd used Google Translate and it had written 
Richard Hammond will be exposing himself <laughs> in this square. And that's why there were so many people And there. didn't I draw a crowd? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I need to do one of those OnlyFans things, don't I? There's money. Yeah. You do. Well, Clear. there you go. You've got time now on yeah. your hands.